Hello everyone, I think we are live. Uh, welcome to my stream, I'm George. Uh, you probably know me as a Volcaro in various Amiga forums. Please tell me if the sound is fine. Um, it's been uh, a month since uh, the last time that I did uh, a stream and I'm trying to remember everything, recall how to do the streams. So uh, thank you for everyone for being here. Uh, welcome to the stream, SLT Snake, Live a Lord. Um, Devlin4000, thank you for the follow uh, and welcome to the stream. Uh, sounds good to you, thanks. That's fine. Um, of course, we started the stream with music. Uh, uh, I'm using the Infinity Music Player, the Imp3, uh, which I'm running in um, my uh, powerbook here where we run Morphos and we are going to see today uh, further uh, and talk about Morphos as I do for the last uh, streams. How are you doing guys? How is everyone? All good? We are just a breath uh, before the uh, weekend so uh, I hope you are going to enjoy the stream and have fun. Uh, hello Emek. Uh, 0402 welcome to the stream is uh, low the, the the sound let me uh, yeah because i have is that a better level load all you were talking about the the music you would prefer uh, higher the music or myself <laughs> so um how is everyone um Today we are going to talk about uh, Morphos as well and uh, I don't know if you heard the news the uh, Morphos team released the uh, 3.17 uh, version of Morphos uh, a few days ago and, uh, and um, we are going to see today um, how we are going to update it without burning the ISO into uh, a CD-ROM and how this can be done on a, a PowerBook which is a pretty easy um, process to do uh, and, uh, but uh, most people uh, are not aware about that so I'm going to show you how you can do it and uh, yeah, the new version of Morphos 3.17 was released a few days ago it has mostly a bug fixes uh, that were um, uh, surfaced when uh, the 3.16 version uh, was released and uh, it has a few um, bug fixes that has to do with the X5000 uh, the Amiga 1 X5000 which is uh, pretty good because I had some of these issues if you remember uh, some time ago I uh, told you that I bought a, a graphics card, a Radeon HD graphics card especially for the X5000 and the Morphos to work well there and uh, when I did all the installation and the setup um, there were some uh, issues that uh, were fixed with this update uh, SLD Snake says, yes, I have read about it at Amiga News Yeah, exactly uh, Welcome Aris Amiga, welcome to the stream and yeah, let's start with that. It, the page of uh, the Morphos team doesn't have so many uh, details, not because they were bored to, <laughs> to add them, but this update doesn't have so many um, uh, changes. So let's uh, see how uh, can someone uh, download and update uh, his system to 3.17 without burning any CD-ROM. Uh, as you can see, my system here is 3.16 and uh, to download the latest version you have to go to the morphosteam.net downloads and get the ISO uh, file from here I will not uh, let you get bored by downloading the, the file because I have that already here um, most people will assume that okay um, we can download the ISO file 
Uh, Morphos has the ability to mount ISO files much earlier than Windows introduced this uh, <laughs> feature. And uh, so you right click on the ISO mount and you see here the uh, CD-ROM. MX says uh, that he already upgraded to Morphos 3.17. No problem upgrading my PBG, uh, PowerBook G4 as always. Yeah, that's that's fine. Uh, for me, uh, I always burned uh, this, the ISOs to CD-ROM files. Uh, sorry, CD-ROMs, uh, because I wanted them to have them available even if I, for some reason, the hard disk uh, breaks down and I need to to boot from a CD-ROM like a live uh, distribution that you will do from uh, for, I, uh, for uh, Linux, for example. Um, and this is helpful if you want to fix some issues that you might have with your computer. But uh, the ISO, uh, updating from the ISO image is much faster, especially on these old uh, PowerBooks that the uh, drives are quite old and slow. Uh, at least for my <laughs> for my machine. Uh, so, if you go to and mount the ISO file, what you need to do is to go to Tools iWizard. But if you uh, double click that to start installing it, you will see that it complains that it needs to uh, boot from the CD-ROM. What can we do to um, overcome this uh, problem? Actually, what you need, uh, what Morphos needs, is to boot from the boot image. If you remember, we have here a partition that is called boot. This is automatically uh, created by Morphos while you install it on your system. And in here, we have uh, some files. Uh, we have a boot.image, which, if you recall the first uh, streams that we did, uh, we talked about that. It is the image that has. Uh, it is an archive that has all the modules that needs um, for the operating system to boot on this uh, hardware. Uh, you will see here that there are some older versions uh, kept as backup because I did the updates on this system, and the the updating uh, process creates the backups of these boot images of the older boot images. And if you open the Morphos Boot uh, ISO and you check to see all the uh, files, you will see here uh, different versions of the boot image uh, depending the computer that you want to install it, uh, install the uh, Morphos. So uh, for us here, I've, what I'm going to do is uh, yeah, actually you see here it, there is a boot Cyrus Plus, which is for the X5000 computers. Uh, the boot uh, Fika, which is the small uh, computer, um, single board computer that was released a, a lot of years ago, the Fika. Um, for the PEG, Pegasus computers. And for the SAM, uh, 460 uh, computers. But also there is uh, one that uh, doesn't have any uh, name, uh, any model specific name, which is uh, for the PowerBooks, uh, for the uh, Mac computers, let's say. So what I'm going to do here is uh, select the old one and rename it. Let's say I will add the version 3.16 because it was from the version 3.16 of Morphos and copy this one. And the thing, the step that I need to do right now is to uh, remove the, the ISO and reboot my system. Now, what is going to happen if not everything breaks down? Um, what is going to happen is to boot in 3.16 uh, Morphos, but with the boot image of 3.17. So uh, the next step is to restart the updating process. Hopefully, hopefully that it won't complain anymore for the version. 
Uh, MXS, I'm old school also, used uh, a CD rewriter. Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. And uh, if you have a rewritable CD-ROMs, it's quite uh, helpful as well. Um, yeah, but, uh, but always, uh, of course, it is it's funny to, to hear all these um, CD-ROM sounds. It reminds you a little bit the drive of the classic Amigas. Um, but but let's see if this is going to work because right now I don't see the system booting. I followed the the specific process with my X five thousand, and it worked just fine. So let's let me uh, restart again the PowerBook and see if that will boot. In case it doesn't boot, I will bring uh, a CD-ROM and uh, restore the uh, the boot image. Uh, so, yeah, uh, what I was saying, the new uh, update. I recommend, of course, everyone to to update to the new version. 3.17 and after you do it there is a, also a new um, update of the OpenSSL library uh, which was released one day later after the, the uh, new version of the Morphos. Uh, Devlin4000 says I'm not sure if this is a, a fully safe way I used to copy the boot image and the ISO file to a USB pen the boot image might need some files available from the ISO. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, you are probably right. To be honest, this is the first time that I'm doing that with the PowerBook. And uh, as it seems, this uh, process didn't work. Uh, let me bring uh, a CD-ROM uh, with the previous version with 3.16 and I'll be back in a second. Uh, let's see right now you don't see anything on your screen because um, when you boot from the CD-ROM it opens only on the uh, MacBook uh, screen and uh, yeah uh, how many of you um, have uh, are using the the morphos please write me down on the on the chat and uh, what is the main usage that you are doing with this operating system is it your um, uh, machine that the operating system that you are using for game for playing games with um, uh, amiga old amiga games or something else until I make it uh, boot, give me a second. It's funny when uh, something is working fine on a computer and on another it's going so uh, wrong sometimes, yeah. The good thing is that we renamed the previous uh, boot image, so the only thing that I need to do right now is to uh, rename it again and uh, put it back. And then eject the CD-ROM. Great. And reboot. And hopefully the graphic, uh, the capture card will uh, <laughs> grab the new, the, the new uh, screen and uh, will show uh, the system uh, working. Uh, Devlin four thousand says I use it for on four or five machines here. Ooh. I'm coding on it applications uh, on Onyx Soft. Ah, nice. I use it to code uh, for AVR embedded device as well. 
I just love the Flow Development Studio, which is part of the system. Yeah, absolutely, it's uh, quite handy. SLD Snake says I used it on a Mac uh, Mini G4 a little bit. I still have uh, some pending learning and deeper use. Okay, okay. Uh, is it working quite well on uh, G4? Uh, Ma Mini Mac? Mac Mini, sorry. <laughs> Uh, MX says I use Morphos every day for email and forum browsing uh, mainly and for some Hollywood programming. MX, uh, what kind of computer uh, you have uh, uh, Morphos running on? I, I'm asking you because uh, about browsing that you said, uh, there is uh, the Wayfarer, which is a very nice. Uh, uh, a very good browser but i find it quite slow uh, on this machine the power book is quite quite slow uh, and i found it uh, slow on my x5000 as well uh, of course depends on the the websites uh, right uh Afen Mufe, welcome to the stream hello from uh, os4 you're watching the stream from uh, your os4 Afen Mufe. MX says also listening to music and sometimes to it with your scripts. Oh, <laughs> that's great, MX. Thank, thank you very much for using them. Uh, SLD Snake says the general feeling on the Mac Mini is quite good, but once you open Wayfarer and start, uh, start browsing, you realize how heavy the web has become. Yeah, absolutely. Even on uh, PCs, right? If you go and uh, download um, a browser and try to use it on a single CPU or single core co uh, uh, CPU computers, you will see that it is um, there. The experience is uh, the same. MXS uh, PowerBook G4 1.6, 1.6 uh, gigahertz, right? Co uh, great computer. Great Affen Mufer. Glad you uh, be able to do it from uh, OS4. So right now we have an issue with the capture card, of course. Let me try and synchronize it. And that's what uh, happens on uh, live streams, especially after one month that you have to stream, everything goes bad. <laughs> um, so let's see what we can do. Right now, um, I wanted to show you uh, how you can uh, update from the boot image, uh, from the ISO uh, file. So it seems that it needs some uh, more investigation from my uh, uh, side. And uh, I am sure that if I try that again after the, the stream, it's going to work uh, fine. So. Uh, we are going to skip it right now because I don't want to, to keep you to get you bored by burning the ISO and then uh, starting doing the update. It's going to be uh, it, it is going to take some time, so this is not uh, what you are here for. Um, uh, Devlin four thousand says I think the file you selected boot image in the root of the ISO is for peg two really. Okay, okay, I am. Um, it's for peg two. Maybe that's possible because there is no other uh, boot image here for uh, the peg two. You probably are right. The thing is. Which one is the one that is used for uh, the Mac computers? Let's see if there is any information anywhere about that. Okay.
I was hoping that the Pegasus 1 and 2 um, image would be the same because they have uh, pretty much the same firmware and um, this one should be the, the one for the um, for the Mac uh, computers okay And um, have in mind one more thing that uh, what I saw with my X5000 when you boot your computer the first image that tries to find if the, it is available first checks for boot Cyrus Plus and then for boot image and I think that this has to do with the, the ISO as well I think that uh, the com all the computers, all the supported computers for Morphos first they try to find the image that is specific for them for example the uh, SAM uh, 460 tries to find this image and if uh, it fails then tries to boot from boot.image uh, and that's what they might have built um, specific for the ISO CD-ROM except probably that's my assumption except the Mac computers would uh, try to boot from this boot image and um, yeah as much as I know there is no information in uh, version something specific that would say okay this is uh, for uh, Mac computers anyway let's leave it as it is we will see the, the rest of the stuff that I have for you today um, and let's talk about the, the last time that we, uh, we've been together and in this stream we were talking about the preferences of uh, uh, Morphos and how you can change the way that it is working uh, let me catch up with the stream the chat um, MXS, uh, yes, browsing in mostly, is mostly for Amiga and Morphos uh, forums which is perfect to do with, um, um, with OWB, right? If I need a little more power for browsing, I uh, GNC to my Raspberry Pi 400, okay uh, Amic VNC, okay, okay uh, Devlin 4000 says the one for Mac 32 bit is located in Mac PPC 32. Aha! Uh -huh. Right. 64 is the G5, right? Uh, Devlin? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Devlin says that uh, just below. And uh, the drawers is in the root of the CD ISO. So, are you fine to give it a try? One more try? I hope so. Thank you, uh, Devlin, for this information. Let me rename that again to um, 3.16 and move here this one. Yeah, I was so blind. I, I should have seen that. Okay, let's reboot and pray. But even if it breaks, I have here my CD-ROM, my um, backup solution. 
to to uh, bring it back to to life let's see how is it goes and uh, yeah uh, have you all uh, updated to 3.17 uh, and are you really uh, one of these people that uh, whenever something uh, is released you go fast and grab it and update to have the latest thing I am like that I want always to have the latest thing available and uh, yeah Develin Thank you very much for your, that information, for that tip. We booted. If we go to about, you will see right here, it says version 3.17. Although that we haven't done any update, right? It just uh, takes that information from the boot image. So what we need right now to do is uh, go to the ISO that I have somewhere here mount it and proceed with the update which is going to be as you can see it starts just fine right now update installation that's the one partition that i have update and it's going to be quite fast because everything is on the same uh, hard disk and uh, it's not going to take uh, so much uh, time so uh, everyone who is using the morpho system uh, updated to the latest version and uh, have you seen anything that uh, this new version brings that is uh, useful for you for example there is a, there is a fix about some old uh, Amiga icons that were tiny, tiny in uh, uh, display and with this version uh, they, these uh, icons right now have again the uh, big proper size and you can find them and use them uh, let me see if I have something like that to show you Here now. No, not really. Okay. The update is going quite well. Finally. And uh, yeah, after this is finished, we are going to have a reboot and um, we are going to see a few uh, more things about the preferences the ambient uh, settings that we left uh, from the previous uh, streams and if we have uh, time i would like to uh, show you some um, uh, inform some things about uh, internet access mainly uh, for uh, YouTube and uh, um, what I would uh, recommend to, to use and how. Let me do the reboot. Okay, everything went well. Thanks again, uh, Develin4000 for the, the tip because my streams is like that. Uh, we all together come here and try to uh, make things work. I'm not the, the, the instructor here. I uh, experiment a lot, but I don't know everything. So tips like that help me as well to learn more things. And uh, this way we uh, pass this uh, knowledge to, to more people, right? So we are uh, we booted the night now and we have all the the last uh, bells and whistles of uh, Morphos version 3.17 everything looks fine so um, next thing ambient uh, this is the settings window that we have for uh, ambient 
And if you recall from my previous uh, streams, uh, we talked about a little bit what ambient is and uh, what's the difference with uh, Morphos and um, why we have two different uh, things in Morphos. Emek uh, says uh, that was really fast. Yeah, I'll try that for uh, 3.18. Yeah, it is much faster than doing this update with uh, from the Morphos uh, CD-ROM, but um, yeah, you have to have a CD-ROM standby in cases like uh, the previous one that I couldn't boot, right? SLD Snakes is live, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I prefer to do uh, live uh, streams than just, you know, uh, streams on U in YouTube, uh, on YouTube because uh, streams on YouTube need too much time and I'm afraid that if I had to do something like that and uh, edit my videos and all this stuff uh, I wouldn't make anything so I prefer to do it uh, live and have something there for someone that might find it uh, useful at least I found that, that useful because uh, Devlin showed me a tip and helped me a lot. Uh, Devlin says, but as I said uh, first, if the boot image relies on some uh, new files on the ISO, the best way is to extract the file and copy it uh, plus ISO to the USB pen and start open firmware to install it. It is explained in the Morphos.de uh, page on installation. Okay, okay. Um, some computers have issues to, to boot from uh, USB, for example the X5000 has some issues because you have to find the specific compatible USB uh, drives that work with that computer. I have just one, I tested, I don't know, 50 and I have just one that uh, is able to boot from uh, USB. Uh, it's weird. I don't know, it's something with the hardware, with the, the USBs, I don't know. Hello Amiga Gamer, welcome to the stream. Glad you're here. Thanks uh, Develin for the link. Thank you very much. Um, so, uh, if you recall, Ambient is an open source uh, project that has to do with the um, Windows environment of the, the Morphos. Okay, um, it is a separated uh, project from, uh, of course it is maintained from the Morphos team um, and as I understand it, um, if you would like to have a different Windows environment in Morphos and create some uh, uh, total different uh, look and feel you could create your own ambient and uh, run it or, uh, on, uh, above uh, Morphos um, but uh, yeah since the first releases of uh, Morphos ambient was the Windows environment that uh, the team uh, chose and this is uh, coming with many updates on every release but it still it's it feels something separated from the rest of uh, Morphos and one of the re uh, of the things that makes you feel like that is the settings because you have a total different settings uh, uh, application let's say and also if you check at the menu of Morphos you have ambient MUI and MUI in general that has to do with the um, the rest of the Morphos. So there are two different uh, settings for Magic User Interface, one for the ambient and one for the rest of the Morphos. Uh, today we are going to see the ambient settings and what you can do from that. Uh, from the first one we have the backgrounds and uh, what else it is, the backgrounds of the ambient. Sorry, let me move it at the side, the background of the ambient, or someone would say the backdrop, the uh, wallpaper or whatever. In Workbench we say, we name it as a backdrop, always. 
So uh, yeah, you see at the top the path of the the files that you of the images that you see here, and here at the side at the left uh, column you have a a screenshot, a, a small uh, screen of the uh, image. If you want to make it bigger, you can click here on the first column or smaller and you can uh, see them uh, and choose which one you want to, to use. For example, if I choose to use this one and uh, double click on that, this is going to be changed at the back and have a look on that. Uh, also, you can change the way that this image is going to be uh, to fit on your screen. Uh, the default is zoomed, if I am not wrong, but if you have a, a pattern or something else you, that you would like to put it uh, multiple times, you can select tiled or you can even uh, select the color to put at the back. Things that you uh, expect to see from something like that and if you select to uh, for a color you can select here which color exactly you want to put you can change it from this uh, color um, palette and choose the one that you want i prefer to have uh, something like a good uh, image and of course you can select on the, uh, at the back of the windows, if you recall, uh, Workbench have that in almost all uh, versions. You can put different uh, background in your windows, so by default it has uh, a color, but if you want to select a pattern, you can, do, you can select a pattern and put it at the back of your uh, windows. Um, icon display. This has to do with the, the icons, of course. Uh, if you select an icon, what kind of color is going to be above the icon uh, when you select it? You will see that these are pretty much the same. Lasso color is when you do something like that and select multiple uh, files. And drop mark, if you take a file and you try to drop it, you see at the back the utilities uh, uh, icon has a different color right now just to, to point that you try to drop it inside that folder and that color is the color of this uh, field here then you can say what is the size, the minimum size of the, the icons etc. There are a lot of um, information to put to, to change the way that the icons are looking and of course you can change the way that the icons are looking on the desktop and inside the windows for example you can change the, the font size if they are going to have an alpha shadow for, let's see how it looks uh, I don't know if it is visible here the, the icon let me make the font size a lot bigger You see the icons here got a lot bigger and if I change the alpha shadow to just shadow is uh, the shadow is much smaller okay and you can change to normal so it doesn't have any shadow you can change the color to to red which looks pretty bad and also you can say that I want an outline like that it make it the way that you like it most. Okay. Uh, there are some extra features here. Icon glows under a mouse, so if you have an icon and you go uh, above it with uh, the mouse, it signs a little bit. Separate files from drawers. So, what's that? Uh, if you if you, if I open here, you see that the morphos read me is just at the end of the uh, folders, folder icons. So if you check it here, separate them, it goes underneath. So the, all the icons are separated in different sections in a way. Fade icon on startup, this is an, an effect when you boot uh, Morphos, 
it uh, fades in all the icons on the desktop uh, default icons are transparent app icon identifier this is um, if you have an icon from an application and you have that enabled then it, there is a, a small icon uh, a small graphic above the icon that uh, identifies that uh, uh, icon as being something that comes from an application that is minimized that is iconified uh, automatic snapshot this is something that you might would like to 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 have but you don't know where it is <laughs> uh, which is that if you change for example I, I'm going to take this oh no uh, if you uh, if you change the, the placement of the icons and you want to save it you have to go to the, the menu uh, where is it and icons Here, it is on the context uh, uh, menu. So if you uh, right click here, snapshot, you save the icons position. This is something that we have in uh, WordPress 3 and above. But if you don't want to do it, here you can select automatic snapshot and saves it every time automatically. And um, this last uh, checkbox is that is, there is support for two states uh, PNG icons, uh, like the ones that uh, we use in uh, Amiga OS 3 and Amiga OS 4. Hello, Hornet. Uh, not really. Thank you for your message. <laughs> uh, th those spammers, let me. Uh, see what we can do about him well this kind of um, configuration is it's quite useful because they help you uh, make um, the system the way that you want right and uh, they are quite uh, useful for uh, everyone. So let's continue. Devlin4000 says you can also snapshot icons uh, plus drawers by pressing right mouse on window title. Here, right. Exactly. Exactly. And um, yeah, one last thing is this select box here, which has uh, the label drive info if you see here in uh, the partitions there is a small um, vertical uh, box that shows the amount of um, how much that partition is occupied with uh, files or if you want the amount of the free space that you have in that partition and if you want to change the way that this is displayed you can do it with um, from this select box where you see that as a text. Let me change the outline to alpha shadow. Like that. And uh, as a text or uh, text and the GOG as well. I prefer the GOG because it is more minimalistic and um, quite useful. Or you can uh, close it completely so you don't spend any resources on that. Although I don't believe that it takes so many, so many resources. Um, great. So the next one, miscellaneous startup. 
as you remember, of course, from Amiga OS, uh, from Workbench, there is always a Workbench Startup uh, folder. This is something that changed in uh, Amiga OS 4, the latest versions, where they deleted, uh, they removed the Workbench Startup folder because there is um, an application right now that you go and add this, uh, any application that you want to start on boot uh, so the the folder is not necessary so but in uh, morphos there is a, a workbench startup uh, folder where you have the utilities that you want to start every time that you boot your system and actually you can create another one anywhere you want in any partition and change that configuration here and say that um, there are the applications that I want to boot on every on every boot that I want to run on every boot, uh, which is convenient because if you have um, a workbench startup that you have in different in um, let's say if you have uh, different installations of uh, Morphos for some reason in different uh, uh, partitions and you want uh, you want to switch between of them but you want to have a common uh, workbench startup you can do it by that and then there are uh, two uh, checkboxes one for drawers and one for documents uh, that uh, remember when you do a reboot or a shutdown there is um, a way to save which drawers uh, were open and when you reboot, uh, these drawers are going to open again. Here you can uh, set the path where you have your default icons. And the default icons, let me uh, show you. It's something that the Amiga OS 4 and Amiga OS 3 has in Envark. Um, that's pretty much the same. So uh, if you go to uh, C's preferences here presets and def icons you will see the default icons that Morphos is using based on the type of the file if it is a partition, if it is a disk, if it is um, uh, here in images it has a default one for the images audio it has some default ones so if you want to change the uh, default icon that is uh, shown whenever you insert the CD-ROM on your uh, Morpho system, you have to, to uh, update these uh, icons here. And uh, I think that if you can do it by coming here, open the uh, information of this icon. like that and here uh, drag and drop a new icon here for example this like that and then save I will not save the, <laughs> that and uh, yeah you can update um, uh, your uh, default icons but if you want to point it to another uh, folder you can do it from this configuration here and then there are a few checkbox on how some things are, work, are going to work. For example, if you are going to have the Morphos, my Morphos here, which is this icon at the top, which if you open it, you see all the partitions and all the assignments, the assigns that you have on your system. This is useful. I, I, I don't use it a, a lot. Also, there is a way to double click on the desktop and have exactly the same thing. Uh, actually, there is a checkbox for that. And yeah, I don't quite use it, but I have that uh, there. And um, if you want to change what is going to happen when you drag and drop files, here uh, is uh, selected by default to be moved. Uh, if you want them to be copied, you have to deselect this checkbox. Now, there are two... Uh, override uh, options for more and uh, multi-view. Some uh, old files um, that you might 
get from uh, an application might require another um, application to um, use for example uh, there are a lot of text files out there that um, search for pp more or something like that with this checkbox uh, even if that happens the this uh, configuration is overridden and then it uses the more uh, tool in morphos to show the the text which is um, if we go here in system and double click the text that's that uh, application is uh, multi-view and there is also more to show the the text i think if you right click and open with more that's more with more is mo uh, more about <laughs> no pun intended <laughs> so more is for text files uh, that's the only thing that uh, more can show uh, but multi-view can show everything that is supported from databases um, and regge files okay so images in context menu which means that if you select it you have images here on the, the, the right menu, uh, right mouse button menu. Uh, and um, create icon for new drawer by default. It's self explanatory. Whenever you create a new uh, folder, it creates a new icon. So, CLI launching. If you, um, let me see if there is. If you go to the menu and say execute command and he here you say uh, new CLI, it opens a window, right? That dimension and that uh, uh, placement and uh, some uh, of the options that you have for this uh, window is configured from this uh, uh, page, from this page here in Ambient. And that, if you go to uh, Amiga OS 3, uh, Workbench 3, you will uh, and uh, go to System and uh, Cell and check the information, the tool types of this uh, icon. It has something similar. It has to do how, uh, in which um, screen it will open, which um, buttons it's going to have, if it is uh, possible to close it or things like that and here you can set where exactly this is going to be placed the upper corner and what kind of dimension it's going to have and this is let me see if you click uh, where is it new cell exactly that so here it says 640 to 480 which is this dimension okay and the placement 200 to 240 which is this corner the upper left corner it's a little bit more technical I don't know how many of you are going to, to change that but in uh, the old days uh, this was uh, useful, quite useful, and I bet that some applications are using that uh, configuration. And also you can set here if you want to have a higher stack for the uh, cell, you can set it here. Uh, this uh, information is not used by, uh, or it is, by the more uh, much user uh, interface cell. It seems that it uses the same information. So, if you want to, to move by default uh, this window to be at the bottom here and bigger like that, you can change that information here and you are going to be fine. Uh -huh. Panels. Um, in uh, AmigaOS 4 and AmigaOS 3, 
0.9 and 3, yeah, 0.9, uh, we call the panels, we call them amidoc, right? So um, the bar that I have uh, at the bottom that uh, there are applications that you can click and uh, start them uh, instantly, those are the panels. Uh, SLD Snakes says uh, stack useful, yes. Yeah, it is useful. Uh, of course, you, if you go inside the cell and say stack, it's, it shows a different amount of stack. And then you can say stack um, 100,000 and increase the stack. This is useful sometimes uh, with games that are ported from other systems to uh, uh, Morphos because they might need uh, more stack to work better or uh, being more stable without crashing. So if a developer or anyone says increase the stack to, I don't know, 500,000, you know that you have to go uh, here, but this stack is set for this um, cell that we created. If we close that and we create a new one, then the stack is going to be back to the default one. Now, if we go to, let me check that, to cell, here it has also the uh, 16K stack. So I guess that this 32K uh, of stack is the stack that is used uh, when you run applications uh, from cell in uh, uh, in uh, Morphos. If I click here, information, now this is uh, 4K. Okay. So this stack is used, I guess, from uh, when you start an application and it starts from a cell, it uses that amount of stack, 32K. So uh, for the panels, panels is the dock that I have at the bottom of the of the page of the screen. Here you can have sub docks like that. So you can have um, different docks that open by, uh, by clicking on an icon, um, and you can click on any application and start it instantly on your desktop, like you do with Amidoc, uh, etc. In Morphos is called panels, you can have multiple panels. For example, here I have the bottom panel, but if I would like to have a new one, you can see this small bo um, bar here, which you can move wherever you want. Um, and then you can take applications, let's say um, something from here, tools, let's say the cell and drag and drop it in this new panel and the icon is shown here at the new panel. Let's drag and drop uh, Snopium. You can change the order from here, of course. This is based on uh, Magic User Interface, so whatever you expect to work in any application that uses Magic User Interface, it is here as well. For example, the drag and drop in different um, panels. So if I would like to move the cell to the bottom panel, you can drag it and drop it here and then it's moved to the new panel, to the old panel. Okay, and uh, let's say that I would like to add that as well. Uh, and if you want to add some uh, sub panels you can, or something like that, you can drag it from here sub panel and drag this one in there. So if you click, it shows the sub panel. Uh, and here it has a, an interesting thing that if you uh, go to the icon of this sub panel and change it to custom, and then again to default, it changes to um, a, a, a default 
uh, folder icon but if you want to have something else like that and let me see in um, sys preferences presets that we said earlier right default icons and i would like to take the disk info you can select which kind of icon you want to have here for the subdoc so you can do whatever you want um, also you have some uh, changes that you can do on the for the panel for example to set a name to recognize it against other panels right uh, to put a background color or an image if you want set the transparency the alpha of the the panel if you want it to be uh, 255 which uh, it doesn't have any transparency but if you want to go to zero it is full transparent as you can see here so you can uh, make it look the way that you want it is horizontal or vertical so you change the uh, alignment of the panel and if you click the subdoc that uh, opens at the side automatically you don't have to uh, configure that and then there are some uh, sizes that you can set for the icons if you want a really small uh, panel or a big one that is more convenient to use uh, let me change it to horizontal and of course it has some um, behavior uh, settings like if you see here we have uh, a bar this bar is used as a move bar so i can move it wherever i want but if you uh, single click on that it uh, it zips the uh, it hides the the panel and if you uh, click on that again it shows the panel like that with a nice um, uh, transition uh, so the position of the panel if you wanted to have it at the side let me change it to uh, vertical and I want it to not be floating but attached to borders so it goes to the nearest border if I move it to the other side it's going, it goes to the, the other uh, side border that's quite convenient and um, if you want to have uh, yeah depth arrangement is if it is going to be behind always behind uh, the the windows or always at the front or normal like any window for example if i go here and uh, double click the um, panel it goes at the front but if i click here on the depth uh, gadget of uh, the window it can come uh, at the front as well so if you want it the panels to be always at the back or always at the front you can change it from the depth arrangement for example if i put it always to front and move it here then there is no way to make it go back of the window this is uh, useful because uh, everyone works in a different way right so if you have options to make it like the way that you want it's uh, quite useful especially if you have it always on front uh, to front and maximize the the window this is not uh, going to be hidden and you're always going to have that panel uh, available and um, yeah stay there and drag a gadget the the bar that we talked uh, earlier you can have it in both places uh, sides like that or you can disable the the zipping so you don't you are not able to hide the panel uh, or you can hide the drag bars and uh, or you can have allow zipping and auto zipping so the bar uh, hides automatically when it says uh, inactive 
like that. Whatever it's uh, more suitable for you, of course. Uh, and then you can place some spacers between the uh, icons if you want to move them away or uh, put some uh, bookmarks here that have to do with the bookmarks of the folders that you have in your system we can talk about that uh, in another um, stream and uh, let me move a little bit faster because there are a lot of uh, options as I said before in other streams uh, Morphos has so many options to do whatever you want all right uh, so it doesn't make too much sense to to see everything uh, here but just to uh, to give you an essence where you can find um, things in um, ambient settings uh, so then we have uh, listers which is the uh, when you are in a, in a window and you click here this is a lister and uh, as you can see you have a list of the files you can click this icon to make the icons uh, bigger in the, uh, the header of the list of this column sorry uh, and uh, especially if you have um, let me see where I have some photos Here I have my home pictures, all icons, this one, okay. And uh, let me see. View thumbnails. So you can have thumbnails of the images. And if you click again the uh, header, they become uh, bigger. In case you want to have a good look of the images that you have in the folder. Okay, so it creates those thumbnails and you can change the size. So this is the lister. And from this page here in ambient uh, settings, you can change the columns that you are going to have. Uh, the size, the color of the the text of the files, the text, the color of the text of the folders, and things like that, and the font size as well. Uh, I like to have alt alternated rows and uh, make the the directories bold. Alternate rows. It's something that. Let me see. Yeah, probably. We can't see it right now because you see that the folders became bolder, but we can't see the alternate rows because um, my um, the machine that I'm using for the screen to maximize it to uh, and be able to be used for the the stream. Uh, makes the colors a little bit uh, more um, light so you don't see here the difference on the on the rows but uh, by using the this um, checkbox there should be um, different colors on each row so you different uh, differentiate the each file in a different row uh, with a different background color. Unfortunately, it is not uh, visible right now. One very nice uh, feature that uh, Ambient has is the MIME. And um, you probably recall that from, if you remember um, the application, the AMI RC and uh, some other applications as well, they had a different um, uh, configuration file that has to had to do with the mime uh, uh, of different kind of uh, different types of files what's that exactly is a way to um, recognize the type of a file if it is an image 
if it is a sound, if it is um, an archive, and what kind of image it is from uh, some um, uh, file uh, information. And that's what we have here in MIME. You can have different, all the different types of uh, images. The Morphos team did a, a tremendous job here. Uh, hello, Falcon 11. Welcome to the stream. No worries, no worries at all. Uh, the Morphos team did a tremendous job here to include all the MIME types, all the file types for images, for audio. But if you want to add your own and say that this kind of uh, file t files, they are images and I want to open them with that application. You can do it from here. Uh, let's see what we can, uh, if we can select something like the GIF. Uh, here are the actions that can be done uh, for this uh, file type, right? Uh, and here you see that it says inherited action. This is something that has to do with the category of that type of uh, uh, file, which is the image. And if you click here and edit, you will see the actions uh, that can be done. And if you double click on that or click on edit, you will see what exactly uh, is going to be executed. For example, it's going to use multi-view uh, multi to view this uh, file. If you want to create your own uh, MIME types, uh, that's the place to do it. And um, also you can set here which is going to be the default icon for this type of uh, file okay it's um, it's the same thing that we have um, in uh, Amiga OS 4 and uh, Amiga OS 3.9 and Amiga OS 3.2 with the, these um, uh, default icon applications that we have to configure the what we are going to do for specific type of files uh, a window, one uh, very interesting uh, configuration page here. It has to do with the window, what you are seeing here about the, the, the buttons, the, the way that the path is uh, shown, like that if it's going to be uh, buttons. And if you want to, to disable it completely, you can remove it from this uh, checkbox here. If you want to make your uh, system look more like the Amiga OS 3, you can do it from this, uh, remove all these uh, navigation buttons at the top uh, by clicking here. Or you can change them by adding more uh, buttons like that. Um, let's say the bookmarks. And um, you can do it from this uh, page. You see the bookmarks is here. And um, you can change the way that you, uh, this is, uh, when you open a new window, if it is going to be in icons mode or uh, a list mode, and the default view mode, if it is going to be all files or only those that have icons. Um, it might me remind you a lot the directory Opus Magellan. Ambient is influenced a lot from directory Opus Magellan and other operating systems as well. Um, and at the bottom here it has a format which is the information that you see at the bottom of its window. If you select some files, you see how many files are selected and the amount of this and, and the, the sum of the size of these files. Um, here from the keyboard you can make, you can use, uh, you can see the hotkeys that you, they are available to delete which key uh, it's available to uh, rename a file or get that information of the file. For example, if I go here, and I want to open the information, I can do it with multiple uh, ways. Uh, 
right click on that, select information, click on the button of information here, or uh, use the keyboard and um, use the right command, uh, left command, and uh, I to get that information. Um, and last but not least, it's the bookmarks. This is something that um, I believe it comes from the Linux world. At least that's where I have seen it at first. Where you can um, mark some um, paths in uh, partitions uh, as bookmarks. So if um, if I want to have, um, let's say, a specific folder of an application that I would like to have uh, fast access to that, for example, do uh, the downloads, okay, I can select it here, uh, name downloads, and for me the downloads are in uh, applications, internet, downloads. That's where I have the downloads. So I created a bookmark here. Okay. And use. So right now I have a bookmark for downloads. If I click that, you see here that there is downloads. So I can click on that and go to the downloads straight ahead without navigating inside the folders. But if you remember, we have a bookmarks uh, button here. Let's see if you click it, downloads, and opens a window to show that, I guess. Like that. And we are inside downloads. So this is a good way to uh, manipulate a little bit the files, the folders, the paths that you are using mostly and um, you don't want to drag and drop all the, um, uh, all the uh, files on your doc but you want to have fast access on these folders, in these folders like we did in downloads and the downloads is a folder that makes sense to have like that because uh, you, you, you are using your browser, you download something, double click on that, you have the downloads in front of you. Hello OP81, welcome to the stream. I'm doing fine, thank you very much. It's been uh, quite a long time since my last stream, so it's good to be back and uh, have a stream. We have a lot of, um, uh, we have seen uh, so far how to update the <coughs> uh, the uh, Morphos 3.16 to the latest version 3.17 that was released a few days ago. Uh, Devlin 4000 helped me a lot because I had some issues uh, with the boot image at the start, but he helped me a lot and we managed to do it without burning any CD-ROM and the update process was quite fast. And uh, just now we uh, finished talking about the ambient settings and what you can find here and uh, how useful they are to make uh, your icon this kind of ugly <laughs> like I did but <coughs> you have a lot of um, options to, to make everything almost everything on uh, Morphos and um, playing also with the uh, configuration that you have for the Morphos, for the generic Morphos uh, preferences and um, with the generic Magic User Interface uh, preferences with these two, three uh, tools you can make, you can totally change the way uh, Morphos uh, is working if you want to make Morphos to look like um, a Linux computer you can do it. If you want to make a uh, Morphos to look like Amiga OS 4 or Amiga OS 3 you can do it, you can make it look exactly like that or close enough. Uh, it depends what uh, 
anyone would like to have uh, for his uh, operating system and actually I like it I like it a lot because by having this kind of uh, configuration uh, options you make the operating system being more like uh, your operating system and that's what I love on uh, operating systems uh, for example I'm using uh, Mac OS uh, every day for my work I'm using uh, Windows whenever I want to play games and stream <laughs> like now uh, you are uh, so um, restricted there on how uh, the operating system looks and the changes that you would like to, to make um, for example remove the, the star bar and uh, make the way uh, change totally the way the windows are looking or making something completely different uh, you are quite restricted there uh, at least that's how I feel um, in Morphos there is a way to change almost everything and uh, change even if you want to have uh, what is it skin after on magic user interface but with light uh, blue uh, window uh, borders you can have it if you want whatever you want and uh, that will be good if we could see much more uh, new uh, skins available for um, the morphos because it will make uh, people uh, more uh, give more possibilities to to people to do whatever they want with the system what I would like to see is the Morphos has some very nice icons that come with the system but I would like to, to see uh, a creation of more icons for Morphos from, uh, from people uh, in the community something like what we have in uh, Amiga OS 4 uh, where some um, people are designing more icons for almost every application that is uh, available uh, and you can have a seemingly less um, feeling of the icons of the system uh, right now there are different icons from the old versions of the, the Morphos there are uh, different icons of uh, small packages of icons that do not cover all the applications and people try to use them but they there are there is a feeling that we don't there is no way to have a, a specific type character of the icons of the operating system that's something that i am missing in uh, morphos and i would like to to see in the future op81 says nice i need to get a, an old ppc apple yeah yeah um, but you have to have uh, to, to know that you uh, are going to have some uh, limitations because uh, the old PowerPC uh, Macintosh, especially the Mac Mini and the laptops, have small amount of um, uh, graphics memory RAM. So try to uh, find the best way, the best. Uh, hardware out there I wouldn't say to go with a dual G5 uh, which is quite power consuming hello brother Bill welcome to the stream glad you're here uh, G5s uh, are quite powerful you can have a lot of uh, a plethora of um, graphics cards to use in these computers and they are quite strong to even use the uh, very good Wayfarer uh, browser with that and watch uh, YouTube and things uh, like that uh, live streaming but they are quite power consuming and some people complain because they are old computers right they complain about the the, um, the noise that uh, these computers are making and they are big they are huge <laughs> computers so if you don't want something like that i would say that 
head for uh, a good power book with good characteristics don't go with something like uh, it has uh, i don't know 500 megabytes or 200 megabytes of uh, ram try to find the best uh, the higher amount of ram that is available and as good as possible graphics card uh, in this power book that is supported uh, you have to have in mind that not every power book is supported uh, most of uh, those that have a Radeon uh, graphics card are supported and um, if you want to be sure which one to, to choose you have to go to okay let's there is a good list in uh, Morphos website uh, of the, the uh, hardware that is supported always uh, have a look on there and you are going to uh, if you choose something from there you are going to be 100 percent sure that is going to uh, work quite well uh, brother bill says i have a powerbook g4 that is the highest spec before apple went to intel perfect uh, that i plan to on putting morphos on yeah uh, brother bill i would be glad to to hear from you how it was it goes and especially how uh, an application like Wayfarer, Wayfarer is working on, on that. Uh, not exactly with pretty heavy uh, websites, but if you use it uh, for browsing stuff, how it works for you. Okay, I don't say go there and uh, put some uh, 1080p uh, video on YouTube and expect to, to work perfectly. Livano says, I looked into the PowerBook G4 compatible, compatible with Morph Morphos and they are not that expensive. Absolutely. You can get them for $200. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you, if you are patient and constantly check about that, you, uh, I believe that you can find even uh, cheaper um, hardware. Let me check here, uh, if you go to downloads and hardware compatibility, this page has all the information that you need about which computer to choose, uh, what works well and things like that. Uh, Falcon 11 says, I would like to ask how it is on your PowerBook with volume simply uh, with function keys. Okay, if you increase or decrease volume, it is a showed background image on screen like it is with brightness or not. Um, I think it doesn't. Let me check. No, if I open here that, you will see. No, it doesn't change. Yeah, I change right now the the volume no it, it doesn't show those small images that it should be showed like that right yeah i don't have it should it show um, falcon 11 also the when you you uh, increase or decrease the uh, volume should it have something like that i'm not sure i have ever seen something like that I have it when I uh, change the brightness of the keys. I have it with the brightness of the screen, but not with the volume. Um, OP81 says, I hope they make the Ice Drake compatible later too. Uh, compatible with uh, Morphos. Is that uh, an option? I haven't read about it. Libello says, yes, I was uh, using the list while checking for used laptop. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, and yeah, the, the, the good thing with the, the laptop is that if you have a, also a good battery, which is pretty uh, difficult to have <laughs> right now, but if it has a good uh, battery, uh, you can move wherever you want in your house and have your, the, your Morphos system with you, right? Uh, let me uh, the 
only thing that irritates me a little bit with uh, Morphos is that if you want to move outside the, the window you have to keep control there is a choice to change it but if you leave control and you keep on pressing the, the window it gets inside the, the screen automatically which is weird for me I haven't uh, get used to it so let me put some music from in before we close uh, for today uh, much better okay uh, Brother Bill says uh, I have Morphos on uh, iMac G4 and Mac Mint G4 and the iMac G4 browses on Odyssey okay but not ideal uh, yeah it's uh, let's be let's be honest uh, Brother Bill uh, the web is quite heavy and if you take uh, a laptop, a PC laptop with whatever operating system in there but uh, has one core and try to, to visit a, a website I'm pretty sure this is going to work much slower than Wayfarer or Morphos so that's, that's logical, unfortunately um, that's why I'm not quite convinced with the need of Wayfarer or a very good uh, or, uh, browser for our systems we don't have multiple uh, threads uh, multiple cores not threads cores on our systems maybe if we manage to have that on uh, amiga os4 it might and then we get a better browser it might be more usable but uh, with uh, one core one cpu it's too hard to have um, such a good uh, browsing experience like you have on your PCs also you will need to have a JIT JavaScript JavaScript that is much faster that we don't have uh, not even Wayfarer has that something like that right now so if you expect to, to use uh, applications like uh, I don't know Discord or uh, WhatsApp or uh, even tweets on uh, this kind of computers this is for me it is uh, it's not going to ever be possible uh, we need a lot more stuff that, than what we have right now I that's my that's my opinion <laughs> I, I don't want to be pessimistic but uh, the the, the uh, websites the the web as it is right now it's it's not helping at all the javascript is something that is um, requires a lot of resources and all these websites do not care to optimize their their code right so i think it's difficult to see something like that um, of course wayfarer is quite good if you uh, expect github to work well if you ex expect uh, websites like uh, stack uh, overflow to, to work well this uh, browser is perfect for this kind of stuff but for example for um, viewing um, youtube videos i'm not convinced yet yet that this is the solution there are other things out there that are much better for example the See where I have it. The Amitube. It's a very good solution to to find and uh, view uh, videos from YouTube in uh, Morphos 
and it works quite well, right? So I would prefer to use something like that than go to the uh, YouTube website and try to <laughs> make it work. Uh, Factual deficits, I thought that's only on my power book. Is so, uh, okay, I think that it should be with background image. What do you think? I think that there should be something like that for the uh, increased decrease of the sound. Uh, that would be great. Uh, I'm not sure if there was something like that before and now it doesn't work for some reason. Um, but yeah, I would like to have something like that on my system. Uh, SLD Snake says, have you fallen into uh, A500 mini temptation? Uh, not really. Um, because I have my 1200 here, as you have seen in my previous uh, streams. So I would prefer to, to put that and uh, that machine and use it for, for gaming or whatever. Uh, I have a Raspberry Pi uh, 500, 400, the, the one that is with the keyboard that I like a lot, uh, so I would prefer to use it. Uh, I believe that the Mac Mini, the, sorry, the A500 uh, Mini is uh, for people that are not uh, using other Amiga solutions and they are not inside this community. So I find it quite uh, good to have and be on the market uh, for people to find it on uh, whatever uh, web st uh, store they visit to have something like that and buy. Uh, but uh, I don't believe that that's something for me. That's why I, I never got into that temptation. Devlin4000 says, if you want to change the window to be able to be tracked outside screen borders, you can change the option settings I contr IC control. Yeah, absolutely. The thing that uh, irritates me is not that you are blocked to do it, but when you move it outside and you try to grab it and with, uh, without keeping the control pressed, it gets inside the, uh, the screen. Uh, and that's irritating for me when you have big windows that's uh, that's something that yeah actually i'm not used to it that's the problem for me it's not that this is a bad feature right it's something that has to do with me uh, falcon level says uh, no it was not but i think it should be yeah maybe we could uh, contact the um, the Morphos team and ask for that. I'm pretty sure that uh, they are going to be positive to add it. Uh, and yeah, yeah. I hope for the next uh, streams to, to do them. Some of the next streams are going to be done on this power book, which I love and works quite well. Some uh, of the streams are going to be done from my X5000, but the problem is that I don't have the Radeon card that I have is not uh, capable to do um, uh, 3D graphics and uh, for games it's not possible to use that uh, graphics card so I, I will do something like that on my uh, powerbook and also the X5000 have in mind that it doesn't have Altivec so the latest version of M player is not working and um, people uh, have to use an older, quite older version of M player that has uh, Altivec, um, that has a version without Altivec. So I hope that in the future we will see a newer version of M player that supports CPUs that doesn't have Altivec. But uh, yeah, this is also something that you have to have in mind when you go and buy something a, a computer to use with uh, Morphos if you find uh, a computer that the CPU uh, has Altivec support you might want to, pre to uh, prefer buying that because 
the software works much better. And if I'm not uh, wrong, Jansek, uh, the, the developer behind Wayfarer, um, replied in one of my posts in uh, Morph Zone and uh, said that uh, it won't be uh, possible to uh, have Wayfarer playing YouTube and video uh, well on systems that do, do not have Alteva. Not possible, I, if I understand it correct, with the current uh, status of the uh, browser, right? Uh, I guess it's not, there is always a possibility at uh, the future to, for someone to support this kind of uh, CPUs. But anyway, um, that's uh, my stream for today. That's all that I wanted to talk about uh, in this stream. I wanted to, to show you a little bit uh, about browsers and how you can uh, view videos uh, online and things like that. But I will leave it for the next stream because we are already in two hours of uh, streaming. And uh, yeah, from the next stream, we are going to see, um, actually we completed most of the things that has to do with uh, Morphos as an operating system and what comes with the operating system by default. Uh, we have seen uh, all the files, we have seen all the applications, we have seen the configuration uh, applications and the next streams are going to be uh, much more interesting because we are going to investigate which applications you can use for daily um, uh, as a daily solution for what you want to do uh, with a system like that. Um, thank you OP for being here, thank you very much. Falcon11 says already on this uh, version of uh, Wayfire, go play YouTube movies well, but I have Altivec uh, PowerBook. Yeah. On uh, my PowerBook, they are working. I had some issues where you try to start the video, and but it doesn't start, and you need to refresh it and things like that, which were a little bit awkward. But uh, yeah, somehow it works. On my X5000, it doesn't work at all. Um, thank you, Devlin, for your uh, help, uh, and I'm glad you liked it. Before we close, I would like to say uh, a big thank you to all of you uh, that you were here and you support me uh, by being here and help me and uh, discuss about uh, what I'd, I'd like to show you. Thank you very much. And also I would like to thank all my uh, supporters on uh, my coffee page and especially my Amiga Pals, uh, Breed, Christopher White, Daniel Trixie, uh, Zedlika and Livelord and everyone who supports me on my coffee page and help me uh, create uh, open source applications like uh, I'm doing for Amiga OS 4, for uh, Amiga OS 3 and Morphos and uh, also create this content uh, and this stream uh, for you all guys and uh, yeah uh, and also have in mind that uh, all the donations that are coming into my uh, page 50 percent of them uh, at the end of every month are going to uh, other uh, amiga related uh, projects uh, and developers and uh, by supporting me uh, have in mind that supports uh, you can support other um, developers and uh, websites and things like that. Um, I upload uh, at the end of every month all the donations that we all together do to other projects. So if you go to my coffee page, you can see the, the donations that uh, we did the previous months. And also you can see news about the projects that I'm working, uh, status uh, update about them and what exactly I am doing for the Amiga community. Thank you everyone for being here. Uh, I'm glad uh, I have you all here and um, have a great weekend and take care. Bye bye.